thank you. Uh, so thanks for the opportunity to talk and thanks to everyone for coming. Uh, so maybe in any other year, I give some sort of broad overview of ergodic Ramsey theory, which is my research is in, but there are many people doing things in this broad area for the special year. Uh, so I'm going to talk to about some sort of class of problems in this area that I've been interested in uh, and give you some taste for it in the short time I have. So starting point for me is going to be the second line here, some radius theorem. If I take some set of integers with positive upper density, I'll say what that is. I look at what portion of the first. And natural numbers lie in my set E and take a look. So I'm seeing here that the set E occupies some positive proportion of the integers. And just from being large, this is going to guarantee that E contains arbitrarily long arithmetic regressions. So for any length K, Some starting point A at a common difference D. Such that this length K progression is. So, this is maybe a, a useful result for illustrating some general principles of Ramsey theory. We have some very structured object integers, take some large subset, and just by being large in some structured objects, we retain some kind of structure here. Some combinatorial structure, we get a bunch of equally spaced points of whatever length we want. Okay, but so the original proof of this is very technical, very intricate combinatorics. I'm not good at that. I do dynamics. So how can we interpret this dynamically? Let's reinterpret this last line here. So I want some point A. So A is an E, A plus D is an E, and so on. So really A is going to be in the intersection. E, E minus E, and so on. So I just need to find some D so that this thing is not empty. And now this looks like something that a dynamicist can maybe deal with. But we need some translation because there's no dynamics here. So what we're going to do, we have the natural numbers, we have this density thing, and this behaves kind of like a probability measure. Not really, it's not kind of the additive, it doesn't have all the nice properties we want, but at least intuitively, it maybe feels like a probability measure. So I'm going to associate some probability space. And this set with positive density, we can model with some set with positive measure. And now where's the dynamics? Well, here, I'm just shifting the set E. I can look at the shifts on the natural numbers. And the nice thing about this is that it preserves this density. If I take some set and shift it by one, the proportion of the integers that it takes up is going to be the same. And so maybe we can model this with some uh, transformation that preserves the measure. And so I'm not stating a precise result. But there is a translation that you can do here. And this is the content of the first and third correspondence principle that given some set of positive density, we can find some probability space that's going to model what's happening over here. And then let me state a dynamical theorem. <laughs> It's really just a dynamical reformulation of what I wrote over there. So I have a measure preserving system, probability space, some transformation preserving the measure. 
and a subset of positive measure. And for any length k, I want to make that intersection non empty for the corresponding thing. In probability spaces, how do we tell something's not empty? We want positive measure. So I want to find some n. That this has positive measure. And actually, Furstenberg did better than this. If I just average over some long intervals, I can find many such n. So these n's are like common differences for arithmetic progressions. And I have maybe some positive proportion of possible starting points for those progressions if I want to interpret this combinatorially. So this is really the starting point for aortic Ramsey theory. We've taken some problem, some static combinatorial problem in Ramsey theory, translated it to dynamics, and then we can prove it that way. And okay, the advantage here is that there's, at least I find this proof maybe simpler and easier to understand than what happens uh, combinatorially. And the key to proving something like this is really understanding the structure of an arbitrary measure preserving system. So if we look at some expression like this, if the transformation is somehow very randomly behaving, then we might expect that all of these iterates of A over a long period of time are going to become mutually independent. And so this intersection could have size, their K sets all with measure A, so it should be like mu of A to the K. So if it's a very random system, we'll certainly get positivity. And then we can describe some structured piece of any arbitrary system. And then if we have a nice description, prove something like this on just the structured piece, and that's going to be enough. OK, so that's some radius theorem. Now what about the, the other part of my title? So as I said, if, if our system is very randomly behaving, then maybe we can improve on just measure 0 here, and, or just positive measure. <clears throat> and if we take k equals 2, it's also very old really basic results in ergodic theory that improves the size here. So I'm not going to write down the assumptions again, but same assumptions as over here. I just look at k equals 2. We can get an inequality where if we have some randomness property to the system. We should expect equality here. And then if it's somehow nicely structured, we actually get an inequality going in a direction that it's at least this big. And so you might ask if uh, for longer combinatory patterns, longer arithmetic regression, something similar will happen. All right, this is a question. <laughs> So that's a question. And then, and okay, so some, I'll explain why this is an epsilon. So if I have some k, can we find at least some n? Here I had it, maybe many n from some averaging. I'm not going to insist on having that. So I can at least find some n. Capable intersection is at least as large as you get from some random system, and I'll allow epsilon error. This was only in the limit, so I'll allow some some small error there. And what this? Why do I call this some popular enhancement of similarity? This is some common difference, and uh, if we could find such an end, this means that we actually have some quantitative bound here on having a lot of arithmetic regressions with that common difference. So I might call this a popular common difference. OK, and I think what makes this problem so appealing is the answer is maybe not what you would expect. So 
the answer to this question is that we can find popular common differences if the length of the progression is at most four. And we cannot for longer progressions. Okay. And so both of these are results are due to Burgelson uh, and Bruja. And to get something like this rather than just <clears throat> radius theorem, what they really use is some refined understanding <laughs> of structuring systems. And I don't have time to say what I really mean here, but as I said, these corresponding to some sort of combinatorial configurations, there's some structured class of dynamical systems that govern the behavior of those configurations in any system. And if you can get a good enough handle on how these structured systems behave, you can determine these uh, sort of refined questions related to, to some radius. Theory. Okay, so I think this is really appealing that there's some actually interesting phenomenon here. It's not always yes, it's not always no. And so there's something to understand about what's going on in these systems to, to produce this. And so what I've been interested in is, well, there are all kinds of other combinatorial patterns that we can expect in large subsets of maybe other groups. And when can we find some sort of popular common difference for those patterns? So in the last, I don't know, well, a minute or two, let me just say, summary of results in this direction related to popular common differences for semi type problems. So if you want to understand, okay, here we had length three and four patterns, we can maybe get some positive results for longer, at least in the integers, we, we can't. Uh, but this is now well understood. If you look for Point linear configurations and abelian groups. Are now well understood. There are pretty good sufficient conditions for when we can expect some sort of popular difference and some examples where you can't. So you have to leave the situation where we're just in the integers to get some counterexamples, but they can exist. Uh, and so basically, we know what happens with three point configurations. And from and a follow up paper with Burgelson and Marshall, we'll move here from, I think, maybe next week in the seminar. And Okay, so four point linear configurations. Are partially understood. But it's very partial. So this is also this way. So the joint work with Orbison and Best and some independent work from Or. And then there are Maybe also interesting, this is just some linear patterns. We can also look at polynomial patterns in the integers or more general groups where we can define polynomiality. And there are some cases where we know what happens with polynomial configurations, uh, but this is far more restricted. And uh, so right now we have some good understanding for three point configurations a little less well understood for these longer configurations and more general ones. Uh, but as I said, the, the key to understanding these is really to get a really a detailed understanding of whatever these structured systems are uh, and seeing the behavior on that level. So behind these results is some understanding of the structure of general measure preserving actions of abelian groups. 
And uh, you can get all kinds of other combinatorial content from understanding the structure of maybe more general group actions um, or looking not just along some linear patterns, but along polynomial patterns. And this is uh, just some taste of, of what we done in that direction. So I think I'm about at the end of my time. So I'll, I'll end there. Uh, thank you all for. Uh, thanks. Thanks a lot for the very enjoyable talk. Uh, I think we have a few minutes for questions. Uh, is there some other lower bound besides the obey to the k that is true? For k Sometimes. Than five? No. So for k larger than five, uh, the there's no power bound. So if you want any any power here, that won't happen. The I don't know what the correct lower bound is, but but it's at least it's very small. Um, but there are some other short configurations where you can get some power bound that's worse than what you get from independence. Yep. Uh, so by uh, linear configurations and like general being feeling groups, do you include like include like corners in like Z2? Yep. Oh, okay. So, so corners are an example of a configuration where you get, there are three points you might expect from U cube, you actually get U to the fourth. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it includes, so really we, what we work on is one of the configurations where you get u cubed and not so much on bounds so far and the ones where you don't get u cubed, but those are also just questions. Which four point ones can you do? Uh, yeah, so four point configurations, I can do something like, uh, okay, really should have. So I'm writing this in terms of a group action. You could maybe the way I originally was writing it, I could do for that subset of the group. This shape that it's a plus b is really important. If you don't have that, there are counterexamples. Um, and if yeah, if they're not integers, I don't know what happens. Can you do four vertices of an axis line square? I can't. I think the answer is no. Um, there's some finitary work that's been done in that direction that suggests it should be no, um, but I don't really understand why. So these results you mentioned, they are all, they are true for arbitrary probability space with a major preserving transformation? Yeah, there is a small technical assumption I swept up the rug. For this version, I need to assume that the system is ergodic, if you know what that means. Um, I swept that out of the rug because for the combinatorics, it doesn't actually, that's not really an assumption. It doesn't really matter. But it, it does, if you don't assume we're it, it, some things fail. But beyond that, no other assumptions. All right, uh, great, thanks a lot. <laughs>